In this video tutorial, we'll modify the previously created relational report in order to demonstrate Dodeca's grouping functionality within a relational view. The first thing we'll do is revisit our department list report, which is a simple relational report that displays the contents of a relational table in our AdventureWorks sample database. So let's take a look at our department list report. Although this isn't a very robust report for grouping, it will serve our purposes for this tutorial. We'll group the data based on the group name, and we'll also use a formula within the group footer that counts the number of items within each group. The first thing we'll do is modify the template to accommodate grouping in Dodeca. Open up the Excel template used in the previous video tutorial to create the department list report. If you no longer have the Excel template previously used, you can export a new copy from the Binary Artifacts Metadata Editor. Go ahead and open the Excel template. In our Excel template, we previously defined a 3 by 3 SQL data range named SQL Dot data range dot one. The range was three rows high to allow Dodeca to automatically insert cells and to use the column IDs from the relational database as column headers in the report. Although we could continue to allow Dodeca to automatically generate our column headers, in this tutorial we'll define our own column headers right here in the Excel template. So, because we'll no longer need an extra row to accommodate automatically generated headers in our data range, we'll reduce the size of our data range to two rows by three columns. Because we'll be defining a group header at the top of our template, go ahead and use the name manager to reduce the size of SQL.DataRange.1 so that it refers to equals sheet1 exclamation point dollar sign a dollar sign two colon dollar sign c dollar sign three we'll also be defining a group footer just below sql dot data range dot one now that the sql data range has been adjusted we'll put in our manually defined column headers for the report We'll use department ID, department name, and department group, then apply some formatting to differentiate them from the data. With the custom header selected, I'm going to apply bold formatting. Now that we've defined our own column headers, We'll need to add a named range to the template that defines the location where our data should begin to populate the report. To do so, simply select the first cell in the row after our column headers and define a new named range. We'll call ours start.cell and make sure that it's scoped at the sheet level. You can assign any name you wish, provided that you remember to use it later when we're configuring Dodeca. Next, we'll add our group header and footer, and then we'll create one final named range that will encompass both SQL.DataRange.1 and the group header and footer. We'll start by creating a header. Our header text will be on row 1, which is no longer part of our data range, and our footer text will be on row 4, which is also outside of our 2x3 data range. You can format your headers and footers any way you wish, but I'm going to apply a nice fill color like light blue. For my header, I'll put group colon open square bracket t dot group name dot value, close square bracket, in column A. In Dodeca, we'll configure our SQL data table range so that the rows in our sample data are grouped based on the value of the group name column. 
Dodeca will automatically create a token called t.groupName.value, which we can use to display the value of the group name column for the current group. For my footer, I'll put count of t.groupName.value colon in column B, and we'll use an Excel function in column C that will count the number of non-empty rows within each group. Select cell C4, and then type the following function into the formula bar. Equal sign count A, open paren, C2, colon, C3, close paren. This formula counts the number of non-empty cells in the range of cells from C2 to C3. When the groups are expanded to contain our data, the Dodeca calculation engine will automatically expand the range to accommodate the incoming data. The last modification that needs to be made to our template is to add a final named range for the group. The group range will encompass our data range, as well as the group header and footer. Select cells A1 to C4, and open the Name Manager to define a new name. Again, make sure your range is scoped at the sheet level, and then assign it a name. This name will be specified when we're configuring grouping in Dodeca, so you can call it anything you wish. But in keeping with our current naming convention, we'll call our sql.grouprange.1. After you assign a name to the range, press OK. When we view our report in Dodeca, the area of the template encompassed by sql.grouprange.1 will be removed so that our report will start with our newly defined column headers. Our Excel template has now been updated to support grouping in Dodeca. We now have three named ranges, manually defined column headers, as well as a group header and footer. Go ahead and select a cell, then save the changes to the template. We can now return to Dodeca in order to configure grouping within the view. From the Dodeca menu, select Admin, Binary Artifacts and then choose the Department List Binary Artifact from the center pane. We could just import the updated template, overwriting the existing one, but because we've made significant changes, I'll create a new version. Press the New Version button, and then press Import. Locate the updated Department List.xlsx, select it, and press Open. Now commit the changes to save the updated Excel template as Department List Version 2. After the binary artifact has been updated, return to the Views Metadata Editor by selecting Admin Views from the Dodeca menu, or by right-clicking on Department List in the Runtime View selector and selecting Edit View Department List from the context menu that appears. Make sure Department List is selected in the center pane, and start by reducing the visible number of properties with the Common button. If you created a new version of the Department List binary artifact, find the Excel Template Properties category, and set the Excel Template binary artifact property to Department List version 2. All of the configuration of grouping in Dodeca takes place within the dataset ranges and dataset tables of the view. Find the SQL Pass-Through Dataset Ranges Properties category, and open up the editor by selecting the Dataset Ranges property and clicking the button to the right. We currently have one data table range defined, so select the Data Table Ranges property and click the button to the right to open the Data Table Range editor. The first thing we need to do is disable Dodeca's auto filtering. Auto filtering is not supported with grouping in either Dodeca or Excel, 
So we need to locate the auto filtering enabled property within the data category and set its property value to false. Because we've defined our own column headers in the template, we'll need to modify the set data flags property by checking the no column headers option. This tells Dodeca not to display the column IDs in our relational table in the report. Now we can define grouping for our report. Under the Grouping Properties category, begin by selecting the Group Start Cell property. This property tells Dodeca where to begin displaying our groups in the report. In our Excel template, we created a named range, start.cell, specifically for this purpose, so we'll use the property value start.cell for the Group Start Cell property. Next, we'll define our actual grouping by selecting the Row Sort and Group by Info List property. For this report, we'll be adding only a single level of grouping, but in Dodeca, we can define up to eight levels of grouping with Excel grouping applied. Dodeca actually supports more than eight levels of grouping, but since eight levels is the limit in Excel, that's the most levels that a report employing Excel grouping can support. Click the button to the right to open the Row, Sort, and Group by Info editor, and then press Add to create a new group definition. Although it's completely optional, let's go ahead and change the name of the group so that it's easier for us to remember how it functions within the report. We'll call ours Group Name because that's the name of the relational column on which we'll be grouping our data. Next, find the Layout Properties category and select the Group Template Sheet Range Name property. In our template, we called our named range SQL.GroupRange.1, so we'll specify SQL.GroupRange.1 as the property value. This property tells Dodeca to copy that range of cells for each group in the report. The next thing we need to do is define our Row Group By Policy. Find the Group By Properties category and select the property labeled Row Group By Policy. From the drop down on the right, select By Column Value. The By Filter property value allows you to use an expression that will define custom grouping, but the most common way to use grouping in Dodeca is to do so By Column Value. Once you've selected By Column Value, an additional property labeled Group by Column List will appear. Select it and click the button to the right to specify the relational column on which you want your groups to be created. In the Column Name and Sort Order editor that appears, press Add to add a new column name and sort order. For the Column Name property, specify the name of the relational column you wish to use for grouping. In our case, the column ID in the relational table is Group Name. For the Sort Order property, we'll use the default value, Ascending. Now go ahead and press OK to close the editor. The last thing we'll need to do for this report is to find the Excel Outlining Enabled property under the Excel Outlining category and set its value to true. This property enables Excel Outlining for the view, and it's generally used for reports with fewer than eight levels of grouping defined. You can also choose to show or hide the detail rows with the Excel Outline Detail Visibility property but we'll leave it set to Show Detail. We've now finished configuring our grouping for this report, so go ahead and press OK three times to return to the View's Metadata Editor. Now we can preview our updated Department List report by pressing the Preview button. You'll notice that our data is now grouped by the value of the Group Name column in our Relational table, and that the Group Header and Footer defined in our template are displayed with the footer calculating the number of items in each group. There are a couple of issues with our report. You probably notice that there's an additional blank row at the bottom of the data range in each group. 
In order to fix this, open up the Dataset Range Editor one more time by selecting the Dataset Ranges property and clicking the button on the right. Then open the Data Table Range Editor by selecting the Data Table Ranges property and clicking the button on the right. Under the Data Properties category, find the property label Retain Empty Last Datasheet Range Row and set its value to False. This property provides an extra row at the bottom of each data range, so that in a report with relational writeback enabled, users have a place to enter and submit new data. Because our report is read-only, we can set the Retain Empty Last Data Sheet Range Row property value to false in order to remove the empty rows. Press OK twice to close the data set and data table range editors, then preview the report one more time. Functionally, our department list view is now complete. But let's change the formatting in the template one more time to make distinguishing between groups a little easier. Return to Microsoft Excel and select the group header on row 1 of our template. Add a top border to the cells in the group header. This will create a visible separator between groups in our final report. Now select a cell one last time and save the changes to the template. Return to Dodeca and re-import the updated departmentlist.xlsx file into the department list version 2 binary artifact. Commit the changes, and then run the report one more time. Because when we set up grouping, we set Excel Outlining Enabled to True, we can collapse and expand our groups using Excel grouping, and the data is now formatted in a way that's easier to read. Now that we've finished, make sure to commit the changes to the completed view. In this video tutorial, we took an existing SQL Excel view and added a level of grouping based on the value of the group name column in our sample data. To do so, we 1 updated our Excel template to include named ranges for the group and start cell, adding rows for a group header and footer, and two, configured our department list view to support both Dodeca and Excel grouping based on the group name column in our relational database table. In the next video tutorial, we'll discuss adding relational write-back functionality to our existing report.